Have you ever wondered what the world of tomorrow would look like? How technology will shape our lives and turn future ideas into everyday experiences? My World of Tomorrow is an innovative new movement that will explore all of these questions and more. For instance, what if we could revolutionize healthcare in the blink of an eye? Or redefine what it means to exist in a virtual space? How will technology re-articulate communication as we know it? and deconstruct our notions of distance and travel. Join us as we look ahead to what the future of technology will bring. It's closer than you think. We discover how 3D printing is changing the face of human interaction. Travel to Korea for the first ever wireless electric vehicles. Get a glimpse of the future of eye care. Discuss disruptive communication and experience 3D technology from a new point of view. The world of virtual reality is one we're only just beginning to explore. One company in Berkeley, California is pushing the boundaries on the physicality of human existence through the use of 3D modeling and its applications in a virtual space. Twindom is a 3D printing company that specializes in printing exact miniatures of real people. The technology incorporates advanced computer imaging to capture detailed three-dimensional models which can then be translated into a physical or virtual space. The true significance of a virtual world is it closes space between people. Um, the internet was this really, really profound revolution that affected everyone because then all of a sudden, someone sitting at a farm over here in Africa could get information from someone possibly sitting here in Berkeley and exchange ideas, exchange information to help improve one or both of their lives. Now in the virtual world, you kind of take the same thing, except it's not just information, it's actual social experiences. It's me sitting here doing this interview with you, except why not in the future? Why, why doesn't this take place in a virtual world? Twindom was started as almost by chance one particular Sunday afternoon when we created the first scan of a human being. And what we learned very, very quickly was that there really wasn't enough content out there that people really wanted to 3D print. In fact, most of our consumers didn't really care that their product was 3D printed. They wanted a better experience than what could be offered. Knowing 3D printing, we knew we could 3D print it, and we started offering that to customers, and they loved it, and they started to buy. But what we also saw and realized is that for the first time ever, I had a digital model of myself. And using that digital model, much like we use any other information about ourselves online, we could custom, customize and tailor and personalize other things. So for example, that particular model of me, we were able to turn it into a gaming avatar. A depth sensing camera unit comprising of an infrared camera, projector, and color video camera is used to project infrared light in specific patterns onto the human subject. The infrared camera then sends this data to an internal processor for interpretation. The processor calculates the 3D shape of the object based on the displacement of the projected pattern. Texture and color are then incorporated into the final image, creating a detailed 3D model. So right now the focus of our, of our custom is how can we make a better memory for someone? How can we make someone remember a particular event in their life better? And you know, we have these 3D twins that we sell right now, and for a lot of our customers, it's just you know, 10, 20 times better than the photograph that they normally would have on their mantle. And all of the value add that comes from this model is related to this notion of personalization. Um, all the products that we use, all the media that we consume, they're all designed for just some generic human type. We have a small, medium, and a large sizing and clothing. But that doesn't have to be the case. Because we have the ability now, not just with Twindom, but with everything else that's happening, to take those same experiences and customize it 
for each and every single person. Uh, we came up with Twindom and, um, you know, have done some ter ter uh, terrific traction and uh, have really, I think, made our product better and uh, made our customers love us. I mean, our customers are, you know, families, um, you know, they're, they're parents with young kids that are super busy. And, you know, when some of our customers open, you know, the little white box that comes in the mail, some of our customers cry because they love it. And that's just one of the most powerful things you can have as an entrepreneur when you're really delivering a product that your customers truly do love. My family's in a different city. I've got a sister back back home in Calgary, Canada. Could I not interact with her um, kind of as soon as we're done here today by throwing on a headset and communicate with her as if I were actually sitting in front of her? The virtual world will let us do that. Twindom's vision is one that will not only bridge the gap between geographical boundaries, but also challenge the notion of what it means to be physically present. Just think of the ways these virtual social spaces could enhance business correspondence, social interaction, and the sharing of ideas right here on the African continent. Now imagine a world where fossil fuels are a thing of the past, where not only do we travel via clean renewable energy, we do so wirelessly. This is the future of travel, and it's happening right now. Developed by the Korean Institute of Advanced Science and Technology and commercialized by Dongwon Olevi, the Olevi is the world's first commercialized online electric vehicle. We spoke to the general manager of Dongwon Olevi, Hwang Ryong Lee, about the inspiration behind this project. Before he get into Olevi company, he included in the petrol industry, but he think that petrol industry's future is not that bright much, so he decided to get in the electric vehicle and electric industry. The Olevi is paving the way for wirelessly powered transport across the globe. A power grid embedded beneath the road enables the vehicle to charge, whether it's stationary or in motion. This dramatically reduces the size of the battery required and removes the need for costly charging stations. The OLEB bus is the kind of same as the electric bus, but OLEB bus is the wireless charging and they don't they do not need some big battery. That's the big difference. A faster charging time compared to the 10-hour waiting period for existing electric vehicles makes Olevi far more practical and economically viable. We, we are the first one who, who commercialized this technology. Olevi has already been successfully implemented along a number of routes throughout the city of Gumi in South Korea. This innovative technology brings the world closer to an ecologically sustainable transport system with the potential to be applied to industrial applications such as airlines, railroads, freighting, and many more. While these applications may seem a long way away, when compared to the increasingly prolific use of smartphone technology over the past 20 years, it's far more imminent than you may think. Think about about 20 years ago, there, there are no one who, who have the smartphone and some cell phone. But nowadays, everybody has a smartphone and some laptop and tablet. So uh, it's the same problem. Uh, now, in 2014, the electric OLEV bus and electric some car is a little bit, still it's expensive system. Still it's high price and some, it needs some big battery. But after 10 or 20 years later, this technology will be the common tech will be common technology like uh, our smartphone. With its revolutionary wireless technology and economical electric power supply, Olevi is well on its way to ushering in the future of electric vehicles. It's not hard to imagine the value that access to clean, 
affordable electric transport would have on the way we live, work, and connect across the whole of Africa. Become part of the My World of Tomorrow movement online at mwatafrica.com. As mentioned by the team at Dongwan Olevi, over the past few years, smartphones have taken the world by storm, with nearly a third of the African population predicted to own one by 2017. One African company is harnessing this technology as a platform to revolutionize eye care across the continent. In many African countries, clinics do not have easy access to modern eye care facilities. Existing technology is often large and costly, making it difficult to transport, maintain and operate. The Portable Eye Examination Kit, or PEAK, has been devised by a team of ophthalmologists, engineers, business experts and software developers to provide low-cost ophthalmic diagnosis through the use of modified smartphone technology that is both portable and highly accessible. PEAK is the Portable Eye Examination Kit. So when you're measuring somebody's vision and various parameters of visual function, there's lots of tests that need to be done, including what can somebody see, which is the visual acuity, their peripheral vision, what does the eye look like inside, and with all those various bits of data we can put together to work out why somebody has poor vision. However, we've managed to condense all of those tests onto a single smartphone using software and purpose-built hardware. So the tests that we're currently doing in the clinic, we can do with someone with minimal training using the smartphone at the door of the patient. So we have a field worker testing someone, collecting their uh, data at the back, from the back of their eye and sending it up to the cloud. From there it's, it's received by an expert grader who can look at the image, explain the issue that's going on and whether or not treatment or referral is required. That information is then sent back and overlaid with the image that's just been collected. And in time that should happen in, in real time. Two years ago, actually, I didn't know it was possible, but now it's very, very real. Because when you see the, the people, once they are examined, and then the services they are going to be brought straight to them, because basically when the advanced team go, goes, maybe with the phone and they examine them, and then they are able to record all their, the, the, if they have cataract, and the, then the, that information is shared with the ophthalmologist, and then camps are organized, or so we can bring now the mobile clinic to them, closer to them. So the, the app works in various ways. The first thing it does is it creates a patient record and that patient record is attached to the GPS location where the examination is taking place. And then on top of that, you start to build the other tests. And the first thing is the visual acuity. If somebody's vision falls below a certain level, the app walks you through various other tests to work out why the vision is low. All the data currently is going to Moorfields Eye Hospital in London where it's being expertly read. Um, attached to that is the, the data will be attached to the GPS position so you can do a search using Google Maps to find out exactly where patients are living. Then we started developing hardware and prototypes using 3D printing. A modern day smartphone is 250,000 times more powerful than the computer that put a man on the moon in 1969. As you can see, the world of technological innovation has set its sights on Africa. Not only is PEAK set to change the future of healthcare as we know it, it's also opened our eyes to the many possibilities for affordable and portable medical diagnosis tools. We'll be back with more incredible innovations and inspiring technology after the break. It's not just innovative applications that are positively impacting our lives. Smartphones themselves are dramatically changing. Let's take a look at another kind of technology that transforms your everyday smartphone into a platform for the world of tomorrow. 3D technology has been around for a while. From movie theaters and gaming, to printed graphics, and even some art forms, 3D is certainly something that most of us have experienced in one form or another. Some innovative software developers, however, are looking far beyond the conventional uses of 3D. They want to create an experience that outstrips all existing technologies in this space. The HP Intelligent Infrastructure Lab in San Francisco 
has been exploring the capabilities of 3D imagery on a flat screen platform to create a new kind of optical experience on something as accessible as an everyday smartphone. A Leia display today is very similar to a liquid crystal display, the same that you have on some of the phones, for example, the iPhone. So what we have as, um, as special here is uh, basically a piece of uh, backlight emits light in all kinds of directions, so people can have actually a very wide view uh, you know, uh, for the same image. So this, the simplest kind of 3D, you display two superimposed images, one destined for the right eye, one destined for the left eye on the screen. And you have a way that your glasses will filter one image or the other. Usually it's done by polarization. You can also have two different signals that oscillate in time, and you have synced uh, glasses that will let uh, one image go after another, for example. This technology uses optical components in the iPhone display to project two different images to each eye. The optics split the images directionally into the viewer's eyes, thus creating a 3D effect. As a result, no glasses or external aids are required. Unlike holograms, these floating images persist as one tilts the display by a wide angle in any direction. This is called the sense of parallax. The sense of parallax is, 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 is this impression that when you move around, you'll actually see behind objects. You'll be able to actually adjust the perspective of a scene. The really nice thing about, uh, about the, the, the 3D holography is that it can touch uh, very different uh, industry and, and in very different ways. So uh, some areas can be very uh, serious in a sense, uh, like the medical area. So we've talked to heart surgeons from Stanford or Harvard, uh, nuclear medicine. And, and that can actually impact a lot of uh, help save lives and, 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 and give the surgeon more information and more ability to, to, uh, to operate, basically. It can also be very useful on the education side. So if you're a young kid uh, trying to uh, understand what chemistry, math, engineering is all about, seeing all these objects in 3D gives you intuition and then you have a better ability to kind of understand all these different areas. So the, the good thing is that it can be applied to various sets of uh, uh, various industries, various, various areas of your, of your life. So that's, a, that's the very nice thing about it. Speaking of modern mobile phone technology and its shift from verbal to visual, it's easy to see just how dramatically communication has evolved over the last century. Emails have replaced fax. Smartphones have eclipsed landlines. And the internet continues to evolve into a fundamental part of our daily lives. Cisco is intent on challenging the status quo even further by means of disruptive communication technologies designed to change the way we communicate and interact on a global scale. Cisco Systems Incorporated is an American multinational corporation headquartered in San Jose, California that designs and manufactures networking equipment. Cisco South Africa, headed by Den Sullivan, aims to redefine South African communication through the use of disruptive technology in the form of advanced VoIP systems. For Cisco, the Internet of Everything is really defined as bringing people, process, data and things together and you know it's connecting the unconnected devices so really looking at around 50 billion devices today that's not connected getting them connected to the internet and furthering the internet and connectivity around that the internet of everything is about connecting people process data and things it's about generating new services richer experience and unprecedented opportunity for individuals businesses and governments Today, 1% of what is possible to be connected is actually connected. So you just imagine the opportunities that we have going forward to connect the unconnected. The Internet of Everything is a groundbreaking movement that seeks to connect all aspects of our everyday lives. This ambitious undertaking will enable seamless communication between over 50 billion devices for a richer, more inclusive user experience. 
Cisco is traditionally delivered into carpeted environments, connecting offices and businesses. We're now starting to deliver products which enable the internet to be experienced in the, even the harshest environments, delivering it into places like factories, delivering it to the shop floor, being able to position internet capable uh, switches and devices into electricity housings, being able to deliver uh, the internet underwater as a result with our devices that we've been able to deliver. And it's certainly here in Africa, we've been able to deliver it into the harshest environments down into mines, into oil and gas rigs, you know, places that we've never had the internet before. Cisco is bringing the technology to Africa as well as South Africa and we're trying to work with the Department of um, Health to really look at extending and building these out into the rural environments as well as national hospitals at this point in time. Well it's certainly not about the technology, it's about what we can enable through that technology. Cisco has this phrase, it's not about what we make, it's about what we enable and the way that we can change people's lives. The important things to all of us, healthcare, education, government services, being able to deliver those richer experiences through being able to connecting through a sensory network, being able, for example, to monitor traffic flows around a city, to then be able to guide that traffic, to be able to monitor and create sustainability within cities, economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, and also social sustainability. I just think over time, the internet will disappear as a word from our diction. Ultimately, everything will become connected. Today, the internet is fast becoming the fourth utility after water, electricity, and gas. Over time, we will just refer to the things that are ultimately connected. In a world where communication and the internet go hand in hand, it's easy to see how this disruptive technology will transform our everyday interactions in ways we haven't yet begun to imagine. My World of Tomorrow is an African-led movement of global technological innovation that seeks to investigate all these possibilities even further. More than just an event, it's the convergence of minds, technology, and innovation that extends to all corners of business and society. Taking place from the 16th to the 18th of October 2014, My World of Tomorrow is a meeting point for innovative thinkers and doers to unite through unprecedented technological innovation. At the head of this movement are a number of key influencers who make up the My World of Tomorrow expert panel. Let's take a look. My World of Tomorrow is collaborating with a panel of experienced social influencers who will share their insights, comments and ideas throughout the event. Dion Chang is the owner of analysis company Flux Trends and specializes in tracking shifting social dynamics and understanding the consumer mindset. I'm really, really, really excited and very, very honored to be asked to be a part of the expert panel. I'm in great company. And I think it's, it's really important for me because I track game-changing technologies which are related to, to business templates. And you have to constantly track uh, these changes in order to ensure that your businesses stay relevant and that they're not uh, obsolete. In the world of tomorrow, Social media will play an ever-increasing role in blurring the line between commercial and social interaction. Melanie Giaramji is a publicist, events planner, social media guru and owner of Two-Tone Communications. I love technology. I can't live without it. I can't run my business without technology. So I pretty much, I need technology. I strive on it. So I'm excited about MWAT and what it's going to teach myself and young people and people in my industry. Uh, I look forward to the future. Shakasi Sulu is a public speaker, writer, social activist and entrepreneur. I'm extremely excited about all the different elements that are coming out, all the, you know, all the different things that we're able to do with technology now. Bale Samadumo is a business communications manager at BCX, Africa's leading information and communication technology services provider. In the future, chairs are going to talk to desks, desks are going to talk to mice, mice are going to talk to your speaker, 
and I'm really interested to know where I will fit into that. As a human being entering into an office that is empowered by the Internet of Things. I think the world in 10 years from now is either going to terrify people or it's going to completely inspire people. For further information on our expert panel, conference speakers, event details and much more, visit mwatafrica.com or follow us on Twitter. Join us again next week as we continue this movement of technological innovation, exploring the infinite possibilities of the future and taking one step closer to the world of tomorrow.